This is Pastor Noble's Greater Believers Worship Center here for a night of Bible study and searching uh, for the truth. Searching for the truth. I pray uh, that all is well in your woods, in your corner of the woods or nick of the woods. I pray that if you're listening to me and you see me that I know that Guess what? God's purpose is crying out from eternity. So thank you for joining us. God bless you, everyone. This is Pastor Nobles from Greater Believers Worship Center doing our Greater Believers Search for the Truth Bible study. Come on in. Uh, put down the chicken, cut off the stove, and let's, let's search the mind of God for 30 to 40 minutes. What better time uh, at the 7 o'clock hour uh, that you can come on and 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 listen to God's word being spoken, and let's delve into God's mind for about thirty to forty-five minutes. Let me write some down right quick, like. I don't have my. My audiovisual person went back to college. Hey, praise the Lord. Hey, sis. Hey, sis. Good evening. Pray all is well with you. Pray all is well with you. Hope my brother is watching. God bless y'all. Love y'all guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming in and allowing us and joining us tonight. And so we're going to wait about a couple more minutes to see who else can come on. And, and those that don't come on, we'll just... Allow them to view it later. But we're going to continue on tonight. Hey, sis. Hey, Cuff. Hey, how you doing? So hello, say hello to your my brother-in-law. Praise the Lord. We hope to be seeing y'all uh, on Saturday. On Saturday. I think I'm going to fly in tomorrow, but we'll join you on Saturday. Y'all come on in. Let's search the mind of God for about 30 to 45 minutes. Here in search for the truth, we want to search for the truth, right? It was, it was the attitude of the Bereans that Scripture says in Acts that they searched the Scripture daily, whether those things that Paul was teaching was true. So y'all come on in. Those of you who are on band, come on in. Hey y'all, those of you who are on Facebook, if Facebook is having some trouble, go over to our, uh, go to band. Uh, I don't know why Facebook is lagging. I don't know if I've got too many, uh, too many uh, people, uh, too many devices hooked up. But come on in. We're going to dip into God's word. We're going to go a little deeper. Uh, and this is the second part of, of this teaching series, Divine Alignment. Uh, and we started it last Sunday. So we're going to go to part two. We're going to, we're going to dive just a little bit deeper. How many love the word of God? How many enjoy the word of God? Man, I just enjoy the word of God. If there's ever a time where we need to be seeking God's mind, which is the word of God, it is now. You want to know God's mind? You got to get in his word. Hey, y'all, we're going to get into prayer in just a few more seconds. Uh, come on in. I know you're going to be blessed on tonight. Part two of divine alignment. We need to get some things what straight. Uh, and there's God is calling for what order. He's calling for order, alignment. Uh, we're getting to that. We'll review just a little bit, but we want to go a little, little deeper. Hey mom, hey mom, hey mom and dad. Thank y'all for joining me. You know I have some of my biggest supporters jumping on here uh, quickly. It's like they be waiting. And so that's encouragement to me to know that there are individuals. Can I tell y'all something? A gift is no use to you uh, unless that gift is opened up and appreciated. So we ought to be appreciating. If you have a woman, a man of God, man, a pastor, won't be either male or female, doesn't matter, woman or man, and they are trying to what? During this pandemic and shelter in place, they're trying to still feed you the word of God. You have something special. All right, you have something special. You have an individual that understands that uh, understand their role. 
Uh, so, hey, if y'all have any specific prayer requests, go ahead and put them in the comments area so I know, so we can pray specifically for some specific issues. I don't apologize for not having Q&A last night at 9. I got caught up in a community. A meeting was held here in the church sanctuary uh, with some people in the community. Uh, and so uh, that's where we were, me and my wife. Uh, I say, praise the Lord. Listen, if you are hearing me, I pray that what? You are experiencing God's presence. And where God's presence is, there is his what? Power. And where his power is, there is his what? Provision. And wherever his provision is, he has to protect it. So he give you his protection. And guess what, y'all? Wherever God's presence, wherever his power, wherever his provision, and wherever his protection is, there you will understand God's purpose and plan for your life. Hey, glad to join you. Thank you for allowing me to come into your homes, your bedrooms, your living rooms, your kitchen, your bathroom, wherever you are watching and listening to me. I do not count it. Uh, I do not. I, I respect that and I honor it. I don't take it for naught. I don't take it for granted. Uh, that you allowed and that you came on. Hey, are there any special prayer requests? If there's no special prayer requests, we're going to pray and then we're going to get into the word of God. Hey, y'all, listen. Listen, get, get your word out. Get your word out. I'm telling you, if you don't have a Bible tonight, if you do not have a Bible tonight, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. For, hey, listen, I don't know. How, how do you read your Bible and get on the cell phone and see me. I, I don't know. But uh, if you're able to grab your word, grab the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God that we may able to fight. Do you not know that the word of God is the only def uh, offensive weapon in our arsenal? The word of God. Uh, so we're going to pray. If there, We're going to wait just a few minutes. I know face uh, Facebook kind of lags to see whether or not there are any specific prayer request. If not, we're going to go into prayer and then we're going to see, uh, we're going to talk about divine alignment, coming into alignment with God's purpose, coming into God alignment with God's word, his will for your life. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. Oh God, we appreciate this moment. We appreciate this space and time. We don't take it for granted, but we do thank you Thank you for the mind to gather with fellow believers in this sanctuary and online. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you that you kept us all day long, wherever our life was. God, you had us in mind, and for that we want to say thank you. You protected us from seen and unseen dangers. Thank you for protecting us from things we didn't even see. Oh God, thank you for keeping us. Thank you for watching over us. God, we bless you and we magnify you tonight. God, this is your day that you've made and all day long, we purpose thine in our hearts to be glad in it. God, thank you for leading us in your path to righteousness. Thank you for covering us with your blood and, and keeping your angels around us. God, we come into this now and we consecrate our hearts and we consecrate our minds. God, we lay everything before you. There's nothing hid from you whom we have to do. You know our uprising, our down sitting. You know our thoughts are fall. So we become transparent before you. We need you. We desire you. You are the often the finish of our faith. You are God, Alpha and Omega. You are our sustainer. You are our protector. You are our healer. You are our provider. You are our sanctifier. You are our righteousness. God, you are our shepherd. You are the shepherd of our souls. And we submit to you on tonight, Lord. If there be anything in our lives that's not pleasing in your eyesight, forgive us, Lord. God, if we have thought of something foolish, your word declares that the very thought of foolishness is sin. Forgive us for thinking foolishly. God, you say if anything is not done in faith, it is sin. Forgive us for doubting and walking contrary to your faith and your will in our lives. God, we ask, oh God, that the blood of your son, Christ Jesus, will wash us of every weight and sin which so easily beset us. Forgive us, oh God, for worldliness. Forgive us 
Forgive us for idle talking, God talking and acting foolishly, contrary to your word. God, forgive us, Lord. Wash our hands. If our hands have touched them unclean, if our hearts have harbored anything, oh God, forgive us right now, Lord. God, we lay ourselves down upon your brazen altar. Let the fires of the Holy Ghost consume our entrails. Let the fires consume our entrails. Consume every fiber of our being. Oh God, forgive us for lusting in our flesh, lusting in our eyes in the pride of life. Forgive us for catering to this flesh. Oh God, for God walking in the works of the flesh, be it anger, be it jealousy, envy, wrath. Oh God, forgive us, Lord. Oh God, we want to stand before you holy. Oh God, we want to stand before you righteous. God, we thank you, oh God, that you're long-suffering. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for not dealing with us according to how you should, but you allowed mercy to rest upon our lives. You gave us grace, that unearned favor. God, we bless your name, Lord. We consecrate this time. Let everything be done for your glory, Lord. Let this prayer, the prayers that are offered up, be offered up for your glory. Oh God, let the word that come forth out of these lips be done for your glory, Lord. Let nothing come forth self-righteously or self-exalted, but let everything come forth for your glory. Oh God, we pray for those online, whatever the need may be. Oh God, wherever they may be, Lord God, you supply it. You, meet, you move and intervene, God. You're not confined by space or time. Oh God, you be the paracletos. You be the comforter. Oh God, alongside of us, Lord. Meet every need, Lord, be it an emotional, financial, or spiritual need. Oh God, we ask, oh God, in your name, Jesus, that the need be granted, Lord. Let your divine will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. Oh God, we pray, oh God, for those on the front line. We pray for doctors and nurses, God. We ask that you encourage them. Oh God, strengthen them. Oh God, let that doctor, let that nurse, let that practitioner, oh God, give them the divine wisdom to know what to do. Oh God, how to do it. In the name of Jesus, you know us, oh God, better than we know ourselves, Lord. God, we pray for that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, Lord, that's seeking your will, that want to know your purpose for their lives. God, we pray if they come across this video, God, that you will say something they will hear something to know that you are still calling for their lives and you're still calling purpose from eternity. God, we ask that you save. Oh, God, save someone, Lord. Deliver someone. Heal someone. Don't let our gathering be in vain, but we want to be impacted by your presence. We want to be impacted by your word, and we want to be impacted in prayer. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Oh, God, anoint me, Lord, from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, Lord. Stir up the gift that is within me, Lord. Override my natural abilities. Let divine revelation come forth. We beseech your presence, God. God, we beseech your presence, oh God. We honor you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let all of God's people say, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, Lord. God, you are good in your mercy. Endure it forever. Amen and amen. Somebody ought to type on here, amen and amen. Put it in the comment section. Let me see some hearts. Let me see some thumbs up to know that you are listening, to know that you're watching, to know that you hear me. Listen, we are in part two of Divine Alignment. We started that on last week, or last Sunday, uh, talking about getting aligned. And what, what did we say alignment mean? getting straight. We said alignment is bringing things back to order, coming into alignment with God. And when we come into alignment with God, we call it divine alignment. Why? Divine meaning something spiritual, something holy, something greater than we are. Hey, Bridges, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Pray all is well with you. Hey, 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 Lady V. Hey, Thomas. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Pray all is well with you. Uh, last Sunday, we was on, we was talking about divine alignment, coming into alignment with God, coming into alignment with his will, 
his purpose, his, his design for our lives and his design for what? Right now. I don't think there's no one uh, on, this, on this live that would not agree with me is that some things need to be right. Something needs to happen. We need to get in what? Divine alignment. We need to see things the way God sees it. We need to see it the way he see it. Because guess what? Uh, the way we see it, we can be off. But there is a call from heaven saying, get back in alignment with what? My will, my word, and my way. My will, my word, and my way. Somebody ought to type, way, will, and word. That's what we want to talk about. When we talk about getting to divine alignment, what we're saying is get by straight. Well, wherever we have veered off, and, and we use the analogy of a car. A car goes to be realigned when the alignment gets off. How do you know the alignment off? When you, when you start veering too far to the right or veering too far to the left and your tire treads are what, worn out on one side. What that is telling you is that your car is out of alignment. And just like our cars can be out of alignment, how, how many know our lives can be out of alignment? We can get out of alignment with God if we're not careful, if we're not listening to the right things, if we're not what presenting our bodies like we should. As a matter of fact, uh, go to Romans chapter number 12. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Romans chapter number 12, verse number 1 and two, I told y'all doing this, doing this teaching, I'm going to be more academic in my approach. I'm going to be more theological. I may become inspired. We may, we may inspire you, encourage you, but most of all, I want to what challenge us what to get back into what realignment with God. How many know that there's some distractions? Do you not know we can be so focused on what's going on with this pandemic and COVID-19 that we will, we will become what? Out of line with God. Another way a car gets out of alignment and off the road, if you would take your eyes off the road, if you would, what, if you stare too long to the left or right, a car what? Will veer off the road. The same way that can happen with our lives. If we're not careful, we'll be focused on what? The president, President Trump, and his foolishness. We'll get so focused on that, then we will get what? Out of line with God. So in Romans chapter number 12, verse number 1 and 2, this is a very familiar passage. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye what? Present yourselves as what? Present your bodies as a living Sacrifice. Paul told the church at Rome in 12 and 1 that he, he begged them, he admonished them, he encouraged them to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Watch this. The first presentation when it comes down to our lives is to present it what as a, not a dead, but a living sacrifice. Notice that he did not say a dead sacrifice. He said a living, something that's actively, something that you were in pursuit, what, on a daily, on a weekly, on a second, on a minute, on an hourly basis. He says, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your most reasonable service. And then he says, be not conformed. He said, if you want to, what, get back into alignment, God, the first thing you need to do is what? Be not conformed to this world. He says, if you want to get back into what? Holiness. If you want to get back to divine consecration. If you want your life to get back in alignment with God's will, his way in his word. He says what? He said, don't be conformed to this world. What does that word conform means? The conformity of this world means giving in. Or, or, or going with the status quo or allowing the world to lead you instead of his what? Word. When we conform to the world, he says that when you conform to something, that means you become what? A part of it. But here he says not to be conformed, but be ye what? Transformed. That word transformation comes from a Greek word metamorphu where we get our English word metamorphosis. Just like 
a, 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 a butterfly. It starts out as a what? It starts out as a worm. And then what? Something happens in a cocoon. It spins itself in a cocoon, a cocoon. And then what? It eventually, with time, it breaks out and becomes what? A butterfly. Something beautiful. It first starts out as something ugly. And then it ends up as something beautiful. You know what God is saying to us? To get back into line with, with him, wherever we've got out of line, then we come back into his way. Be ye transformed. Go through a transformation process that ye may what? That ye may prove what is that good, what is that acceptable and perfect will of God. Here you have in these two scriptures, how do some principles concerning getting back into alignment with God? Paul would not have wrote this to the church at Rome if there wasn't a problem. Can I tell y'all that? He would not have wrote to the church at Rome these words. The Holy Spirit would not have had him to pin these words if he didn't know or they didn't have an issue. What he says is, he said, get back into alignment with what me. Be ye transformed. Stop conforming. Stop allowing the world to dictate your actions. Stop allowing the word to dictate who you are and whose you are and what you're supposed to be doing. Do you not know I can get so focused on trying to please this world that I get out of focus trying to please God? I can become so focused on being accepted in this world that I get out of focus of what being accepted to who? To God. That's what he says. He says that ye may prove, show proof that what is his good and acceptable and perfect will. So we was talking about divine alignment and we used as a scripture, Matthew 7 and what? 13. Because he gave them an analogy of being out of line. He says this, enter ye at the what? Straight gate. So he was talking about alignment. If you want to enter, if you want to know, if you want to experience the things of God's kingdom and the things of heaven and the things of God, he said, hear how you do it. He said, enter in, ye in at the straight gate. There must be a action because once you enter in something, you exit out of something. Y'all ain't listening. If you're going to enter into something, that means you come in order to enter in, you got to move from one place to another, you're exiting. In our lives, every second, every moment, every day, every week, we are exiting out of something and entering in something. Even on tonight, to watch me live, you had to exit out of what you're doing and enter in on what? Facebook or band. So he says, enter ye in at the straight gate. S-T-R-A-I-T, not S-T-R, straight. He said S-T-R-A-I-T, not S-T-R, how you spell straight? A-G-H-T, yeah. Straight gate, for wide is the gate. And we said, we said that word straight means uh, in divine alignment. Well, he wanted them to eat because a straight is, is it's a canal that connects two bodies of water. In order to get from one body of water to the next, you have to enter into a strait. It is where ships go in from one body of water to the next. So he used that analogy as, as ships straighten up and align themselves to go through a strait. And at the, at the edge of straits are bodies of land. He said, as the ships line up to go from one body of water to the next, enter in. That's how your lives ought to be. You ought to be focused. Somebody say, focus on what? The destination. Yeah. Enter ye in at the what? Straight. The straight is a place of what? Of limited special capacity. Here we go. A straight comes from the Greek word that means a place of limited and special capacity. What he's saying is not many things 
can come into this area. Only certain things are allowed in this what? In this place. Can I tell you something? When it comes down to aligning or realigning ourselves with God's will, his way, and his word, only so much can go in. Mm -mm. In order to align myself with God's purpose and plan for my life, some things I cannot bring with me. Yeah, because a straight word means a place, a narrow, a centralized place place that only things that are allowed can go through. You cannot bring junk into a straight. He said, for wide is the gate. Now, he making this comparison in Matthew 7 and 13. He's comparing the straight what? The straight gate with another gate. At any moment, at any time, there are two choices we have to make. Either you're going to choose to live what? Holy or unholy. You can't live in both worlds. Either you're going to choose to live righteous or unrighteous. In order to be aligned with God, we live the way he declares it. Mm -mm. That's why Paul told the church at Rome, don't, don't listen to the world. Don't conform to the world's values, attitudes, beliefs, and habits. But transform yourself into what? The attitudes, beliefs, and habits that God is accepts. He says, he says, okay, so let me show you what's opposite of the straight gate. There is a wide gate. There's a wide gate. And what's wide? It means more than average. A great variety of people and things. There is a gate that's wide. That brings in everything that it can. But the straight gate is only for special things for special people. But the wide gate is it brings in everything. It's a smorgasbord. It's great. You can't discern between this and that in a wide gate. He said for wide is the gate and broad is the way. My goodness, I'm going to break this thing down. I told y'all I was going to be more academic in my approach because we need to understand that in order to get back into divine alignment, there are some principles that God accepts and things he don't. And what Jesus was telling them as he was teaching this, he was telling them about the straight and wide gates. There's a straight gate that's for special things and only special people that align themselves right can enter in. But there is a wide gate that takes in everything. He said, wide is the gate and broad is the way. Broad covering a large number that lead it to destruction. And many there be which go in there. He said, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and there be that find it, and few there be that find it. So he comparing two ways, straight versus wide and broad. He says the straight gate is narrow. In order to get there, it's narrow, it's focused. Can I tell you something? That's a great principle of being aligned with God. Focus. It causes you to focus. You got to focus to enter th into this. A wide gate doesn't need you to focus because it's wide enough so you can live any kind of way. He says that many that go that way, there's destruction. He says, but narrow is the way and straight is the gate that lead it unto life. And few there be that find it. Oh my goodness. He said, there are very few individuals that have enough focus, that has enough persistence, that has enough what? A fortitude to not be what? Taken in by the wide things, the variety. Mm -hmm. The variety, just like, just like a buffet. A buffet got 100 different varieties. And y'all know what happened when you eat a variety of things, you become what? Sick. 
I would rather eat this fried chicken, these greens, these what, macaroni and cheese, this what, cornbread, rather than eat all that other stuff that's gonna make me sick in the end. Can I tell you something? There's nothing like accepting a bunch of stuff in your life that causes you to what? Get out of alignment with what? With God. My goodness. So we talked about that. We talked about the fact that he says this in 1 Corinthians. He says in 1 Corinthians 14 and 10, he says, there are many voices that have gone out into the world um, and many are without signification. He says, there are many things being said, but there's not one distinction. He said, if you don't understand that one distinction, you become barbaric. You become loose. You become out of control. I want to show y'all something. I want, to, I want to dive a little deeper. We're in the book of Matthew. Go to Matthew 23 and 37. Oh man, when we think of when we think of Matthew, you I've told y'all that Matthew presents Jesus as king of the Jews. So in Matthew, you see a lot of kingdom principles and teachings. That's why there are more words in red in the book of Matthew than there is in any other gospel. Because Jesus is teaching what? Kingdom, kingdom, the dominion of the what? King. In order to live in the dominion, the realm of the king, you have to what? You have to be at line with what the king proclamates. Mm -mm. Y'all look at Matthew 23 and 37. Let me show you this. Let me, let's, let's dive a little deeper. Y'all ready to dive a little deeper? Somebody, somebody said, let's, let's get off the surface. Let's get a little deeper. So Jesus, watch this, y'all. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you another area we need to come back into alignment. Listen at the words of Jesus. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Now he's speaking to what? His chosen people. Jerusalem, the place where his chosen people what are, the place of worship, Jerusalem, the place of what God's what temple, the place and the people that should know God. Here Jesus laments over them, and I'm going to show you why. And it's going to be what a reality for us because we are his what chosen individuals. He has grafted us in. Call him in. O Jerusalem of Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. He said, one of the laments I have against you, that you are killing those, what? That are speaking my heart. Because prophets speak the heart of God to what people. Prophets not only foretell houses, cars, and land, but their majority responsibility is to speak the heart of God, become the spokesman of God's heart to what his people. He says, Jerusalem, you are out of alignment with my will because you are killing those that speak in my heart. Oh my goodness. And sometimes the heart of God doesn't follow what? The heart of man. Because the heart of God is all about truth, all about righteousness, all about holiness. He said, one of the ways that you are coming out of divine alignment is that you're killing my spokesman. He said, you are not accepting their voice. Those of us that are truly speaking the heart of God. He said, oh, Jerusalem, you killing my spokespersons. I sent them to you and for you, and you are killing them. How else can you become aligned with me? You are killing my messengers. You are devaluing who they are. You are what? That's why it's a danger. I don't care. It's a danger to speak against a man or woman of God. I would rather what? Say nothing than to speak against the man or woman of God. Those of us that got it for real. Those of us that what? Are proclamating and giving God's word for real. It's best to keep what quiet because you can kill your blessings. 
good God Almighty. Mm -mm. He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He says it twice. Whenever God says something twice in the scripture, take a second look. Because something is, be, be, uh, is about to be said that's going to be life changing. And the first thing he says, you're killing the prophets. He said, and stoned them which are sent unto thee. The worst thing someone can do is to kill and stone the person that God is sending to deliver you. To bring you back into alignment. That's the worst thing. And do y'all not know prophets in scripture? Let me tell you something. When the prophets showed up, people wasn't raising their hand. They was what? Crying out, forgive me. Because when the prophet shows up in the Old Testament, he came to pronounce judgment in many cases. The prophets bring your heart first back to God before they do anything else. Before they foretell, before they, they, they give God's confirmation, houses, cars, and land, they first come to bring your heart towards God. Don't touch the men and women of God. Keep your mouth out of them. Watch this, off of them, which are sent unto thee. He said, you're killing the word that's coming to you. He said, you are not valuing it. In order to get back into divine alignment with God, we have to value the men and women of God who represent those of us who are doing it right. I got to add that. We ought to value them in our lives. We ought to what? Esteem them. Don't kill them. The worst, oh Lord Jesus, the worst thing you can do when trying to get back into alignment with God is to what? To devalue the person God is placing in your life to what? To understand his will, his word, and his way. He's the life guard for you. Y'all ain't reading. Watch this. Watch this divine alignment. He says, Jesus is lamenting. He's actually crying out. He's crying out, you're killing my prophets. You're killing my messenger. I'm trying to bring you into alignment. Lord, all right, all right, okay. I feel you, I feel you. John 1 and, um, John chapter 1, verse number 11. The scripture says, you don't have to turn here. He says, he came unto his own and his own received him not. Jesus came to what? First, his people, and they did not receive him. The worst thing you can do when it comes down to alignment with God is not receive the words and the person that God is sending for you, to you. John 1 and 11, he came unto his own, and they didn't receive him. So that's why he now turned to the Gentiles. You know what? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you this. Sometimes God blessings, sometimes his purpose, sometimes his, his destiny comes to you. And then we miss it. And God now what? Turns. All right. Matthew 23. He says, I've gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. He said, I'm trying to gather you just like a chicken would gather what? The chickens. The hen would gather the chickens together and protect you under what? Its wings. Man, God sometimes can send divine protection and cover for our lives, and we miss it. That's why I say, if you are living in this pandemic, you are in violation to not have a man or woman of God over your life. You are in, I don't see how you're going to make it. Oh, yeah, I know we got an attitude where I seek God for myself. That's good, and we have to, but some things don't happen in our lives into a man or woman of God that covers us. That's the order of heaven. 
Y'all ain't reading. He says this. He says this. Because of that, your house is left unto you desolate. He said, because you killed the prophet, you didn't receive my messenger. He said, you didn't come under my wings when I called out to you. Therefore, your house is left desolate. Therefore, I am going to leave you. You will not have your purpose fulfilled. You will not see my hand in your life. You won't see the true blessings that you could have. Just submit. Somebody say, submit. Submit to the man or woman of God over your life. Some things don't happen until we submit to God's prophets, to God's messengers. Some things don't happen in our lives. Now I know, I, I, I know we got we got we got internet pastors. I know we got, you know, I know we got homeboys, homegirls that we call. Uh-uh. You gonna have to submit to some man or woman of God. That's what. That is God's divine order. Watch this. Nobody can enter, get to God except it comes by me, Jesus. So God says it is through what? The man, I'm going to show you the man or woman of God over your life. In order to get back into divine alignment, you need to submit to a shepherd. You need to submit to someone that God can what? Talk to and what? Speak in your life and what? Show you your, develop your gifts. All right. All right. Go to Ephesians chapter number four. Told you you needed your Bible to turn with me. Ephesians, y'all, four in, 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 in 23. Four in 23. Is that what it is? Ephesians four and 23. No, nah, that's not, that's not it. That's not it. Uh, Ephesians. Uh, but, 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 let me see here. Let me let me see. Ephesians 4 and it's got to be in verse number 4. Oh, yeah. Chapter 4, verse number 7. Watch this. Watch this. Verse number 11. No, nah, verse number 7. Y'all got it? Y'all read it. It says this, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the what? The measure of the gift of Christ. To every one of us, there's a grace and there's a measure of the gift of Christ. We all have gifts and talents that God wants to use for his kingdom. But watch this. Wherefore he said, when he Ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. That means when Jesus, when Jesus rose and when he went back to the eternal spirit of the Father, he took those who was in Abraham's bosom. He led, he took captivity captive. They was captive. And he went down there. See, y'all give me on something else. And, and I teach that someone. And he held he, those that were captive. He led them captivity. When, they, when he ascended, they ascended. Watch this. Don't want to teach that. And also, he gave gifts unto men. He gave men as gifts. Verse number 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. Watch this in verse number 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. To get back into divine alignment with God, you're going to have to submit to what? One of these ministry gifts. Why? So your life, perfect don't mean without fault. Perfect means mature. That ye may what? Work the work of the ministry. For the edifying, for the building up of the body of Christ. He says this. Except the men and women of God, this is one area that we need to get back in divine alignment because you let the world tell it, you don't need nobody over your life speaking into it and developing your gifts. Satan don't want this one because I'm telling you a lot of individuals that's on here now, a lot of individuals that share watch this has not submitted right to a man or woman of God, one of these ministry gifts. Therefore, your gifts are not being perfected you ain't edifying the body. It is not only the pastors, 
teachers, evangelists, prophets, and apostles responsibility to build up the body. It is yours responsibility. We are in alignment with that. Watch in verse 13. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. Until we all what? Get back into divine order. Somebody write divine order. He says, till we all come back into unity. You know why there is so much discord in the body of Christ? So many, so much schism, so much havoc. It's because individuals are not submitting themselves right to a man or woman of God. And they ain't what? Because you are not submitting yourself, your gift is not being utilized. And the body of Christ needs your gift. We need your talent. But you giving your gift out into the world. Nah, your gift and your ability to sing, your abilities to put words together was first given by God for what? The kingdom. Your ability to, to organize, your ability what? To plan, your ability to what? Encourage, exhort, is first utilized for the body of Christ till we all come into divine alignment, unity of the faith. Come on now, hey Sims. Hey, sis, he says, watch this, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Not only when we get into divine alignment, when people submit, right, then not only there's a unity, but we become more aware of the knowledge, more in depth, more understanding of Christ's mission, his ministry on earth. Until the mature measure of the statue, watch this, of the fullness of Christ. You see why it's important for me, my life to be into divine order, divine alignment. Why? Because somebody else is depending upon me. Good night, man. Divine, that's what I'm talking about. Divine order. This walk, your walk, your life isn't, honey, you know why you're going through? For somebody else. Y'all don't want to listen to me now. He says, get back into divine order, divine alignment. Get back to what? Kingdom principles. And he shows us. That's why in Matthew, he was crying out. He said, oh, Jerusalem. Let's stay here. Let me show you something. So, so, so when I get into divine order and I submit myself to a man or woman of God and I see them as the individual that God sent to what? To, to, to what? Pour into my life. To what? To nurture. To what? To teach me. He says that we henceforth be no children. Watch this. Tossed to and fro. Out of alignment. A car that's out of alignment, it don't stay right, it don't stay left. It definitely don't stay straight. It brings it to alignment, also bring into connotation shooting a gun. If you ever been on a firing range, it's, there's something that way they call sight alignment. That means in order to hit that target, the front sight and the rear sight has to be in line. Aligned. If the front sight of the gun and the rear sight is not aligned, then either you go, your bullet is going to hit what? Off the target. He says this, if your sight alignment is the, if the front sight is lower than the back sight, you're going to shoot what? Low. If the front sight is higher than the back sight, you're going to shoot high. The reason why we are not hitting center mass in our lives, because we are out of what? Alignment. Y'all ain't listening. It is time God is calling his people, his kingdom, back into divine order. Can I tell y'all something? Can I show you another divine just out of order? So, so in Genesis, God made Adam, gave him, told him to name everything, told him what? Take order. Then Eve was created. Then the enemy what? come to influence Eve who influenced what? Adam. God wanted the man to follow what? 
God, him. He wanted the woman to follow up the man. But when they got out of order with God, the woman is following what Satan. The man followed the woman and God don't follow nobody. No. Out of what order? He said that ye henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro out of alignment and cared about with every wind of, you know why we have all these doctrines? You know why we have all this stuff coming up that we can't make no sense at the word? Even if I think wrong, I can't come up with some of this stuff. I'm here because people are out of order in alignment. Y'all ain't listening to me. He says, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of me. People listening to what? To the world more than they listening to what? God's messengers. You are out of order. Y'all, I don't want to stay there. Let's, let's go back to Matthew. Y'all done got me off. Where we was, Matthew 23 and what? Where we were, somebody, somebody, where we were, Matthew 23. In verse number 38, he said, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And a desolate house don't have no furniture in it, don't have no pictures on the wall, don't have no couch. It is what? Plain. The reason why our lives are empty is because we are not what? In order. We are not aligning our lives just like we should to what? Christ. He says this, for I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. You talking about an indictment when God says, From this day forward, you will not see my hand in your midst. You know why some of us don't see God moving? It's because we are what? Out of alignment. I want to show y'all in my closing. It's 7.52. I got eight minutes. Let me show you Luke's version of this account. Luke 13. Turn two books over. Luke chapter 13. We're talking about divine alignment. How I get back straight with God. And the only way we get back straight with him is what? Conform ourselves and submit to the men and women of God who God has placed in our lives. If you don't have one, you need to find one. Matthew 13, verse number 34. Yeah, I know there's a move going that says this, 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 this out of order, this wrong for teaching, this heresy. The spirit of error. I don't need no man or shepherd over my life. All right. Keep believing that lie. Luke, Luke, Luke 31. Let me show y'all. Let me show you a nut Luke's version of how he saw it. It doesn't contradict, but he saw it a whole different way. Luke 13 and 31. Golly time going. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying to him, Get thee out, move, depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. God, I can teach something. He said it to them, go ye and tell that fox. He called Herod a fox. And y'all know the attitude of a fox, sneaky, conniving. Conniving, sneaky. Come one way, but mean a different way. Go tell that fox, behold, I cast out devils and I do cures today and tomorrow and the third day I shall be what? Perfected. He prophesied of his resurrection. He says, nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Y'all ain't helping me. Y'all ain't helping me. And then he said, oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, which kill it. We saw that in Matthew. But notice the first issue he had to deal with is the spirit of Herod. The spirit of Herod is twofold. It's the spirit that kills. The spirit of Herod is one that kills. 
You know, he killed all the children, 12 and under, just to find Jesus. It's a spirit of murder. You want to deal with what? Murder and killing of babies and children? You got to deal with the spirit of Herod. That's, that's a whole nother teaching. But he says this. He called him a fox. You sneaky conniving. You know a fox. He looked like he's good, but he has ill intentions. Let me tell you something. There's a spirit today that's going on now that looks like he's got it going on, is acting, is barking, but it is a fox. It is setting itself up to kill you. That's your purpose, that God's plan for your life won't come forth. Y'all ain't helping me. He talks about the prophets. Can I tell you something? In this day, Alignment need to be twofold. The men and women of God need to get in line with their calling, their purpose, and their gifting, and the people need to submit. I got to go, y'all. We're talking about divine alignment. We're talking about getting our lives what straight. Stop veering to the right, being tossed and fro, tossed and tossed to and fro by every slight wind of doctrine. One thing said, we flock to that. Another thing said, we flock to that. We never get, I've seen people lives just be rush on. They never sit down, stay in one place long enough for God to develop their gifts. You are out of alignment. Do you not know when a car has to be aligned, they have, they have to put these devices upon the car and they have to turn screws to get that car back, his wheel back into alignment. Honey, it ain't going to feel good. But no God is alive. Sometimes trials, temptation, and tests get us back into alignment with God. Nothing like a good fire to get you to pray. Man, it's nothing like a good fire, a good testing to get us to run to God. Can I tell you something? Don't be that individual that's running to and fro. Something that said here, you flock to that. Something that said here, you flock to that. No, stabilize. Somebody say, stabilize your walk. Stabilize. Sometimes to get people back in alignment when there's chaos, somebody have to say, hey, snap them back into reality. Snap them back into what? Focus. Somebody say, focus. In order to get in divine alignment, godly, holy, righteous alignment, you have to be focused. Why? Because there's everything that's vying for your attention, man and woman of God. There's everything trying to get you off focus so your gift and your purpose, won't, his purpose won't come forth in your life. But I decree and declare on the night that anybody that's watching here live and that we will get into divine alignment. What? So that the body of Christ can be blessed. By my gifting. Mm -mm. Lord have mercy. Golly man. He gave gifts. He gave men as gifts. The worst thing a person. The worst position a person can be in. At this moment. Is to not have. Spiritual covering. Now yeah God got you. But he gave men and women as gifts. That's one area I can get my life back into alignment to his will, his word, and his to his way. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, I know. Just like that there are parishioners that have fallen away from the faith. There's men and women of God. But God sends somebody in your life to what? Get you back focused. Mm -mm. Y'all listen, I got to go. We got one minute, one minute. Are there any questions? Is there any clarity that's needed? We're talking about divine alignment. We're talking about Jesus lamenting over his people, Jerusalem. And it serves as a representative of us today. Christ crying because what? We're killing the prophets and the messengers that he's sending and the message. 
and we're not entering in at a straight, narrow place, but we're taking everything in our lives and we're flocking to eat in everything. Honey, get, man, get back into the vine alignment. Just like a car, just like a, a gun. In order to hit the target, the front and rear sights have to be aligned. In order for the car to drive straight, you got to what? Align those wheels. Guess what? They attach that machine not only to the front wheels that control your location, but the rear because the whole car has to be, you cannot, there you go. You cannot be part aligned and part out of line. Everything, your whole life. And it first start with what? God, his will, and secondly, it starts with what? Now what? Submitting your life to what? A prophet. Somebody that can speak in your life. Somebody that can develop your gifts. Y'all, y'all, I got to go. I got to go. Listen, are there any questions? Are there any questions? Is there any clarity that's needed? Y'all, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it is time to get back into divine alignment. Somebody say divine alignment. It's time to get in his word to see what he's saying. That's why here at Greater Believers Worship Center, we're going to go in this word and we're going to see what it's saying. Y'all see that behind me? Transform lives. We got it. Transforming lives. Transforming, transforming, equipping. That means developing gifts for the ministry and what? Impacting our community. Divine what? Alignment. Hey, listen, I got to go. 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 Listen, I'm telling you, if you are if, if you are in the Moultrie, Caulker County, Georgia area, and you say, listen, I need covering. I'm out of alignment. Even if you ain't in this area. And you say, listen, man of God, I need someone to cover me. I need someone. Listen, contact me. Contact me. I don't care where you live. Contact me. We will find somebody. We're going to find somebody that your life can be submitted to a man of God. Now, I ain't talking about you saying it. I'm talking about actually being submitted to. All right, got to go. All right, y'all, I hope y'all been blessed. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We glorify you. Thank you for your word. Thank you that the entrance of your word give it light, give it understanding to the simple. Thank you for the simplicity. God, we pray that there was something said between my lips and those ears and somehow your Holy Spirit got into it and you gave everyone what they needed to hear tonight. God, I pray that they didn't see me, but they heard your heart. God, we pray, oh God, that you will help us to get back in the alignment, get back focus, to make priorities, priorities. God, we thank you. Go with us as we leave this place. Cover us with your blood. Let this word, let the seed of this word fall on good ground. And I pray that this churn in our hearts and that it breaks up things in our lives. Let your word be like a hammer. God, let it be like a hammer breaking up fallow ground that seed may be come forth and fruit may be in our lives. We thank you. Y'all listen, I will see you later. Be praying for me. I got to travel out of town. Got to go. I got to, I got to fly out tomorrow and hopefully we'll be back here Sunday. If not, I'm telling you, I'm going to be here Sunday at 11. I'm going to be somewhere saying something. All right. I don't care if I'm on the plane at 11 and they say, okay, turn on the cell phone. I'm going to preach in that plane to everybody that's here. Listen, we love y'all. We thank God for you. Be blessed. Peace out. Gotta go.